What's up, y'all? You're off in God's Country with Reed and Dan Isle, also known as the Brothers Hunt. God's Country is a weekly road trip to the intersection of country music and the outdoors. Two things that go together, like bars in downtown Nashville. Or Nashville and the traffic into town this morning. I know that's right. Produced by Meat Eater and iHeart Podcast. So hop on up and ride shotgun with us as we take the back roads with some of today's biggest stars and creators behind the songs you know and love. Today we sit down with Bryce Long, good buddy of ours. Hit song long, dude. Hit songwriter, cowboy, roping, got some belt buckles probably strewn up in his house. I don't know nothing about that. I didn't even get to tell my cow story. Oh, yeah. I almost asked about it. I know. I thought about it, but you took so long with the other one. <laughs> of course. It's my fault. The music one, it was a long one. I'm sure we'll have more podcasts down the road. The fart can, story. It was good, though. It. it was good. Can you say fart on podcast? Are you going to do the thing on it? Okay. We Just going to let fart go. I guess so. Um, Stay tuned. But yeah, yeah, you want to you want to check this one out. Really excited to have Bryce Long, hit song Long on with us Stay today. Stay tuned. Um, Stay tuned. And thanks for hanging out in God's country. Stay tuned. You've already said that a few times. Far ready, far deep said. I can't say far again. It's Bryce Long. He's uh he's in the room with Bryce us today. Bryce hit song long, buddy. Hit song <laughs> long. Just, I've been thinking about it. Ah, um, uh, back at you, boys. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. Um, but that's Bryce. He's gonna we're gonna be chopping it up with him here in a minute. Um, let's get to some uh what you, what we've been up to. Well, wait, I want to talk about the turkey I cooked. Okay, go for it. So, I get this turkey start smoking it like nine o'clock at night smokes from nine to four 165 i'm like got it perfect wing falls off gas plus by the way they have this creole butter inject you can do yeah. it's just like everybody's like oh you're just doing the creole butter fire dude yeah i mean it's really sounds really, good it was good man did you get any ring hell no i got I some in the house i did a little sure. tony's on the outside you know oh, yeah and a little creole um Anyway, so I take it off, put it back on at 11 in the morning to reheat it, get to my in-laws. She's like, okay, I think we're ready to cut the turkey. I cut it. Dude, it's like looking awesome. Are you like shaving it like the movies? Yes, it's just, just like the movies. Weight. Yes. And I was like sneaking the taste. I was like, it was the first turkey I've ever done. So I get it all cut up and it's sitting there like steamy, perfect, dark meat separated. I picked the whole thing. She's like, oh, well, I forgot to cut the dressing on. Hang on. It's, it's going to be a little bit. An hour later. <laughs> Wait, so she, get, she forgot to t- cook. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have to nuke the turkey? Did you have to microwave it? Well, she was like, maybe warmer. we should throw it. I was like, uh-uh. We're not doing that. Because I know what that does. That's dry just going to dry. It's going to be like eating this It'll couch. It'll look like a turkey on Christmas vacation. You know, yeah. Second time room. today. That's came up. Sam was just <laughs> talking about it. Where yeah. he goes, yeah. yeah, it's great. I was thinking about that. <laughs> Five second clip in my head the whole time. I was like, I'd try to go to sleep and I'd be like, I'm drawing the turkey out. I'm drawing, and I'd run out there and shake it and be like, 220 perfect. But it can be done, man. It's not as terrifying as it sounds. If you got a smoker, you just grab some Creole butter and a little Tony's, bro. Watch it. 10 hours. It smoked 10 hours. Dang. It was fire, dude. I, I should have brought some. I should have brought some. We've been, like doing some, we've been doing some hunting. And uh, man, I. Bow hunting is hard. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna preface with that. Bow hunting is tough. Um, it is, but it's even tougher when you're not good at it, like you. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's the only real hunting though there is. I think. Ooh, hot topic <laughs> off the <laughs> off the top ropes comes Bryce. Bryce. I mean, I'm just being honest. I mean, we you, you know I grew up, honest. Or, but I, you know, and I don't I don't really hunt that much anymore. Uh, but I do find it interesting and. In, and I, you know, I'm not like you guys. I know you guys hunt tremendous, you know, uh, all year round, everything. And but well, not for me, <laughs> for any game wardens listening, yeah, <laughs> no, I don't mean it like that. But you know not what I'm saying? Night. It's but for me, it's. I mean, you know, I mean, I can go out the back door and and uh, see about anything within fifty yards. I want to see most of the time, and it's like, man, those guys that, you know, I see those pictures of elk hunters with with bows and i mean that's it's amazing to me ain't no doubt man that's legit hunting uh, it's interesting to hear that from a like a a non-serious hunter yeah, like, man, like yourself for sure like, i just the perception the of, of bow hunting of, slash yeah i mean i just admire somebody i mean because that is legit hunting i mean you're 
you know, you got to get that animal close enough no doubt. to stick him with an arrow and be good enough with that bow to shoot him. And, and I mean, that's or not that's good legit. Enough, depending, dude. Oh. <laughs> I got to show you these pictures. Go ahead. I shot. I shot a deer. Uh, we've yeah, been hunting. We've been to Kansas. We, we've been to yeah. We went to the Midwest and 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 hunt a little bit and and I I knew the deer was in there and and got in there tight to him and sure enough man he walked out and and I've got a bow at twenty six yards and he's quartered away maybe ten percent I'm in a twenty foot stand standing up so I'm gonna you know it's gonna arrow's gonna hit at an angle I put it if I was gonna shoot him again this afternoon I'd put it in the same place man and and I thought I double lunged him. So watched him turn and run into the woods and went back, cracked some beers at the camp. Like, we, we yeah, it was started like, celebrating a little bit, man. Yeah, because you, you've you been in the woods long enough. You know, he's been in there sure. long enough to know what a what a good hit, what a bad hit, right. what a great hit is. So he was going, great hit, dude. Yeah, it great wasn't hit. a questionable shot at all to me. And, uh, and we come back out a couple hours later, trail it for 250 yards, back out, call a dog. Dog comes in, trail it for 1.8 miles. Um and, huh. and then and two I, days later, this comes. Yeah, up. two nights later. But look where he hit him. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Yeah, it just I mean, it's just high. You and, see the little, no, see the mark right there behind the shoulder. Oh, I see it. I mean, I see that big fat coon when they're eating too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. You can run over corn. You can run over corn in Kansas. He's deer, feeding Kansas. That deer's yeah. one thing, but golly, boy, what a nice. That's coon. a booner <laughs> cooner right there. Yeah, dude, he probably won six. Um, <laughs> but look at that shot, man. But yeah, the deer that's showed amazing. the deer showed back up on camera, and that's that's the prayer. That is I the mean, spot. that's the spot. Yeah, I that, mean, it looks from the picture, it looks a touch high. But but when you think about the angle, the angle of coming down, yeah, you should have yeah. got both ones. I don't understand. Yeah, and. and and, and luckily, I didn't. Uh, well, I mean, I guess you know because he's still alive. But uh, but just the turmoil of of like the not knowing between the shot and that picture of of, of not finding him, right. not knowing which every bow hunter. And, and this is something I did it last year. I shot a, I actually heart shot a deer, and there was no no blood, and he ran a hundred yards, and we didn't find him for a month and a half later. Like, and you just the 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 things of bow hunter, the highs and lows that that come with bow hunting, you have to accept and have to to know that 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 risk is there and that's going to happen as a bow hunter but golly it don't make it no easier but i'm i'm very sounds glad like y'all need to be a little better at finding deer is what you need to be i mean i don't <laughs> i'm just saying. it sounds like reed is really good <laughs> I, I found, I mean, I found that deer last year well <laughs> yeah about eight months later we found it <laughs> yeah um, it was a good deer man that that deer you found was that was i mean that's probably 140 last year here in tennessee yeah, yeah. yeah but again bow hunting um, it was the neighbors that shot and ran that far. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. <laughs> just kidding me. All right, enough about kidding. us. Bryce, what do you call him? Hit, hit song long. Hit song dude. long. I've been uh, working on your nickname for a while. Now. Dan's got a thing on the show funny. where he nicknames everybody. Well, that, I like the, it. The others were mean, and I was like, Nah, ah, you, you know, say one mean. That wouldn't be surprising. What was, what was one <laughs> no, mean? That no, wouldn't no, have been surprising no. either. No. As was... long as I've known you, I, I would suspect that. <laughs> No, man, we're a complimentary show, dude. We like to have guys on that have had big hits, man. Where are you from? Where's, uh, your, where's hometown for you? Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Okay. I forgot uh, y'all got a little Kentucky thing going on yeah. over there. How far is your wife's place from his stuff? I don't know. How far is Benton from Oh, uh, Probably about 45 miles, I think. You go up like 24, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of 65? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But that area where Jordan's from is beautiful, man. That that that's, was, a, that's nice. That's good country. Over I was there, there yesterday. That's good yeah. country. God's country, maybe. Yes. But not is. only the the <laughs> Kentucky connection. Bryce knew Bryce knew my wife before I knew my wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, tell that weird story. That's well, I just cool. I don't know much of it. It's just that Jordan worked yeah, with, with Carrie, Carrie. and, and yeah. under Carrie, and at, we felt we fell in love with her, man. Immediately, she's such a good human being. I, and I told. When Dan Dan actually told me that I remember this. Oh, really? Yeah, had been seeing each other. And, and what did I say? You already you had already known. Well, I kn I kind of knew because Carrie had mentioned it, but I didn't you know I didn't know that if they were dating or what the you know because I didn't get I didn't like get into it like well what's going on? you know she just <laughs> yeah. said hey you know Reed and Jordan had been talking or whatever and I was like oh that's cool man and then when I was writing with you yeah I, was I writing with Dan and Dan brought it up and uh, I said Reed's dating this guy named Jordan. And he was like, I think that's a girl. <laughs> I was like, oh, snap, my bad. Cut that out. I'm oh, sorry. And he goes, man, I'll tell you something. He needs to lock that Yeah, I up. did. And I was like, 
well, hang on, babe. They only been dating like two months, man. Are we sure? And he was like, no, I'm telling you. Yeah. I know this girl. She's as good as it's going to get. Like, yeah, man. I, he, I, will ne- he was like, Reed's a good dude, but he ain't never going to do no better than that. Right first time, yeah, first time I saw Bryce after they knew all that, he was like, hey, dude, before we even say what's up to each yeah. other, he was like, don't screw this up, man. Like, you ain't going to find one no better. <laughs> no. And I, and she it, was. True, I mean, man. we kind of knew pretty – I feel like I knew pretty quick. I actually – funny, I actually did – Now they're two kids deep, dude. I know. That's nuts. That's awesome. I actually did text Jordan – Thinking she at the beginning. That's the reason talks, I say. Yeah, that. I thought Tell, she was she was working for a friend of mine, and and she, they told us to hook up together to figure it out. And I thought she was a dude when I was texting her on the phone. <laughs> I was like, "What's up, man? Uh, here's this thing you needed." And she was like, "Hey, thanks." You know, yeah. I mean, total chick texting yeah. but i just i was like cool dude thanks <laughs> like, like still did she ever tighten you up on it like oh, hey, yeah. guy. Huh? Oh, like, so hey guy. yeah guy. yeah because i was like i was like well i actually slid in her dms and or i or his dms right? no it was oh, okay. this was jordan's facebook okay okay well, so her, he got, her instagram he, got to see, he was like mm, and i, <laughs> I didn't I, know dude how i how i started talking to jordan <laughs> She posted a picture. She started following me on something, and I slid into the DMs. I was like, "Hey, I don't know you." I was like, "But this picture is awesome. It's pretty great. You went out there by yourself, did it?" She was like, "Oh, oh. she was like climbing a mountain or something." I'm yeah, a, she was like, "She was like, you yeah. actually." She was like, "You actually do know me. We've been talking for the past three weeks. You just thought I was a dude." Been, a dude. And Man, I was like, what? "Wait, what?" I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, um, two kids deep now. Kentucky, yeah, you hit it. They out hate the park, each man. other. It's awesome. oh, two hundred two, man. We're yeah, we're thick off in it together now. Um, That's good. Um, Kentucky. Hopkinsville, did you did you buy some ground? I can't remember how the story went, but you got you bought your home ground. No, or it's a, a my mom and dad live uh, same place. That you know, uh, it was actually my grandparents' place, and then and then when my grandparents passed, my dad and mom moved into that place from where we grew up. And, but it's been family for years, and uh, the the farm across from from their came available and gotcha. ended up getting it yeah we actually so. bryce and i have written a half a song yeah, about it that's right we're not gonna say the title of it because i don't want you thieving it that's right and it's really it's really good really good it's about awesome. that kind of stuff yeah that, that's great you know because i know dan you know got that place that he's got and it's and that's such a cool story too i remember you telling me that they showed up the day y'all closed with memory pop champagne, champagne, champagne that's great. Yeah, man. man and that's you know, man, the reality of all that stuff and everything we do, in all honesty, is to be able to share it and, and have sure. that opportunity to family. And, man, you Preach. guys, I, you know, I admire both of you a lot and writing and all that stuff. But I re- what I truly admire about you boys, honestly, is the family thing that you guys got because it's special, man. It's yeah. really special. Well, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. Yeah, right? I appreciate that, too. That That's very true. I would say it's it, to me it's – probably the most valuable like earthly thing we have is is, is the bond between yeah because at the end of the day it's really all you got right like i mean For sure you know i say this all the time but it's like we have a large family so it's like who needs friends when you got family because we're so yeah. <laughs> we're so tight we're always doing everything together like i don't even have i don't even have i'm full up you yeah. know i don't have much time which is so cool man thank you it's pretty yeah. cool that's that's a definitely been a gift i feel like you know and I was telling him that story about when I was able to weirdly, godly purchase this piece of property that backs up to my little house. There was a time where I was sitting on a hillside and dad, you know, dad drives insane anyway. He came flying over the top of the hill and my daughter was holding on. She was two at the time. She Liza was holding on to the steering wheel. <laughs> Remy was in the passenger seat. They come, and I was putting up a deer stand. They didn't even know I was up there. And so... When they popped over and they went down the hill, they went down the hill and parked and everybody got out. He started throwing the ball with the dog and Liza was like toddling around. And I was like, it, it, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's almost like I could audibly feel like, hey, man, you've been given this. Be responsible with it and yeah. share it, you know. And so that doesn't mean you can come kill my deer on it, but we can, we can cook hot dogs yeah, at the yeah, front yeah. of the property. You can come, yeah. <laughs> You can come to the backyard. And I can There's only point. so you can, much you can do look for at family. It. That's I mean, right. Come on. <laughs> at some point, I got to call it. Hey, yeah, we're family, but that's out of yeah. That's out, yeah don't kill my turkey. Don't right. kill my turkeys. So did your dad? Did your dad? Did your folks do farming stuff? Did you grow up? Oh yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I grew up in you know kind of farming, ranching kind of thing. A lot of cattle, and we raised a lot of tobacco growing up. Hay and 
you know, crops and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I spent a ton of time, at, you know, gosh, driving tractors. And I mean, you know, just you just do what you do. I mean, yeah. it's it's farm life. I mean, yeah. and that was how I grew up, man, 100 percent farm life. And there's and, a giant uh, difference between like country boys and farm boys. Yeah. There's a big difference. Similarities, too. Yeah. Lifestyle Similarities, wise, but, yes, but I'm telling you, yeah. that farm mess is a whole. What are you talking about? You don't even, you don't know. Bro, you don't remember the story about that girl I used to date? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I'm saying you ain't ever lived it. Now, you, now. <laughs> no, I lived it for a morning and I was like, I don't want no more yeah, of this gotta, farm life. Gotta, I want to go back to being country. <laughs> it is true. Very true. There's a lot, a lot to be said with Did that. Did y'all do cows? Oh, yeah. Lots. Tons. Yeah. Dude, I didn't realize how, like, stinky cows are dude oh man i don't really think they are okay. i mean as opposed to like a oh, goat there's the part, there's the difference something. between country boy and a farm you know, boy yeah I this mean, is exactly hogs <laughs> we we had hogs when i was growing up too man you want to talk about something that was rough i mean i can remember going to school and because we had the whole farren house thing where you you know you had the pigs inside and all that so kind you of rode stuff. the pig to school or I didn't ride the pigs to school. I did ride a pig or two. I'll have to say, man, you know, feeding them. And I was, of course, I was, you know, I, I loved horses and grew up on them and anything that I could ride. I was all about it. Uh, I never, I mean, I, I did like, like I, I had a bad wreck when I was a kid on a motorcycle, mini bike kind of thing. And I didn't care. Motors and stuff like that kind of scare me. But animals mm -hmm. have always been just, I, you know, I didn't, I'd ride whatever, but. I'm um, the exact opposite. But it it's was funny because the, the thing about the you talking about the smell or whatever is like I can remember going to school. And this is no joke in seventh grade, like science class was the first class, you know, and and I had I'd be over there and have fed that morning for some, you know, whatever reason. Uh, and because uh, dad usually fed for us or whatever. Anyway, long story short, I, I there was a boy that set two two seats down from me in science class and he was country boy too and and uh if you ever were around something like that man like the smell would get on you immediately oh yeah get no in way. your nose yeah. and stuff and you'd think man i smell like a hog i mean like <laughs> man i stink you know and stuff and i'd already gotten a shower and went to school and stuff and so I've, <laughs> i finally leaned over and i said hey man can you smell me and he's like no, buddy, you're good. It's, it's no one else. But that it stayed with you, you know, <laughs> yeah, if you'd ever been in there. And um, but they, yeah, the cattle. I mean, I, you know, I guess. I mean, it's definitely the aroma of being on a, you know, farm ranch kind of thing. But it was a way of life to me, man. And yeah. I loved it. My dad actually, my dad finally had to tell me. He's like, "You got to go." Really? You know? huh. Yeah. He finally said, "You got to go. You got to." You know, you gotta, you gotta move. You gotta, you Figure gotta get you to Nashville. He's just like, yeah, because you're gonna. I mean, I was roping and going to rodeos and stuff, and I was probably eighteen, nineteen in there. Um, and and it was, I mean, it was a God. I loved it so much, and I, I mean, and I was playing music too. Man, I was, you know, I was playing fair dates all over the south, southeast kind of thing, and and. Uh, uh, so when know, is were, it? How old are you when this is happening? When you're starting to play music? Eighteen, nineteen. You know, you just grew up playing guitar, like somebody around you. Well, played. my dad's whole side of the family played music, not professionally. Nobody did, but like my grandmother played piano in church, and she played by ear and could play anything, and she was so good. And my dad played guitar, my great uncle played fiddle, and then all my my dad's brothers and sisters they all sang. So mm -hmm. music, like when we get to get like Thanksgiving or or Easter or or whatever, you know, we'd eat. And then we'd all end up around the piano. My grandmother would be playing gospel hymns, awesome. all the That's old cool. great hymns. And, yeah. and they would just, she would play and we'd all stand around and sing. I mean, she had several hymn books, you know, and stuff. And then it'd move out of that into country music. My dad would sing. My dad was a really great singer. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really was a great singer. And, and uh, um, you know, he played and stuff. And I just, man, I just kind of morphed into that, I guess. What's your I favorite old it. hymn? Um. Man, I, you, you know, because here's the thing, I I'm, love. The I song. miss old him. Yeah, there. I mean, it's it's funny to me. Um, probably, I shall not be moved. I don't know if you know that. I shall not be. Oh, I yeah, shall not. That was strong. probably one of the first songs I ever sang when I was probably four or five or five or six or something up in front of the church, you know, yeah. and stuff. But <laughs> my grandmother, you know, she uh, she really she was a big influence on me really wanting to do music but it's funny dan because even to this day and it's odd because it's just one of those things but 
man, I can hear those old hymns, mm -hmm. and I can. Cry. I mean, I'll start crying. Same. I mean, I really will. I no, mean, it'll I, move me to it's the point me, to no, where no doubt. I will tear up. I mean, even to the, even I'll start singing along with them or whatever. I mean, you know, it just because, I mean, it was. It's just kind of the way I was raised, Dude, but it reminds me your, so much of totally. my, my grandmother and and just you know growing up in that world. And I I wouldn't, I mean, my faith is you guys know I I, I hope you do. I mean, I, I kind of feel like it's 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 out there, but it's just it's a part of me that I I just really appreciate and I'm so glad to be you know brought up in it. And same, same it. Man, No, same. I feel the same way. Uh, Man, you remember it as well with my soul. Oh, do that's I? A jam, yeah. dude. Man, that's a mover too. You talk know, about man, a, a, a real moving. Yeah, yeah, that one gets me. Just um, as I am, like oh, I mean, yeah. all those, man. That's dude. But just see, just as I am lives in a different place for me because it was always the altar call. Oh yeah, yeah. And I our get it. piano player back in where we're <laughs> dude, from. Dude, I think it was on page three, page three hundred seven. I, I, I literally do. I think it was I love it. Man. I know Amazing Grace is three thirty three. I there know that you go. for a fact. Yeah, yeah. That's but, that's legit right there. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you would know they'd be like, you know, turn the, to page the, the song leader or yeah. whatever would be like, okay, let's turn to page one thirty seven. You already didn't even song. look, and yeah, you're yeah, already there. The old Rosie Cross. Yeah, exactly. We doing all four verses. We doing all four verses. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, verses one and three yeah. today, and we got we're going to move on to the you know Amazing Grace, and we'll get all of them in. Yeah, yeah, that was, and it's uh, interesting to think about too, like like the the connection between that and then what how we were all brought up, and 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 yes, in a country setting, in on a farm, you know, yeah. on a farm, oh, yeah. and and being taught these lessons, and that kind of all of that kind of meshes and mixes together. And it's funny that how many of us it brought to town. Yeah, oh, no because doubt. there's a lot of, I mean, I, tons. Yeah, that that all you know have that in common that brought it to town and you know ended up in country music and yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I mean, it, it is. trying to pour their feelings on a paper. Yeah. Piece we of paper. talk about yeah. it all the time. It's like you know we were out with people and and Reed and I grew up singing harmony because of church. We had two, we have two sisters, so like. I mean, our dad, our dad's a preacher, so we were there every Sunday, every week. And then you take something like "Just as I am," there, piano's players, hundred and eighty years old, and it's just as <laughs> yeah. I am. What? I mean, it's just With like that one place. Yeah. So, but anyway. The four of us would be standing next to each other and, and just, I mean. Wailing. Oh, dude. Bringing and it. Just, and, and you sing it so many times, you just get exhausted. So you, we'd switch parts. Well, I would wanted to hear what my, I wanted to sing what my alto sister was singing. Yeah. And then I wanted to sing what my soprano brother was singing. And then, <laughs> so brother, I it was back then. Yeah, I, was, I could get up there, son. I'd get up there. Dude, oh, I'd, so hey, I'd make them stand up and chat. So I'd I get stand up. Eight, they so. loved Reed singing. I bet they They'd be did. like, sing it again. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would sing some song four or five times. We'd be up at church just, just I getting I love down, it, so. man. Dude, tell us about Karen Beck and New River when, and Billy Joe. Is that Joe. Karen Beck and New River? It's, that's who was singing. No, it was Jaron Davis. It's Jaron Davis, and it's not Karen Peck and New River, but it's Jaron Davis and the Holy Spirit or something. Like it's, it's like Dude, it's Jaron Davis and it's not he's Jaron always Davis with the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. No, That's I know, the name of their and band. the New River or something like that. Okay, was, whatever. Yeah. I'm getting them mixed up. Go. Well, so yeah, so I sang, dude, and and Billy Joe Kennedy is like he's like our our second, you know, hometown dad. Like he was the my dad was the bad the the head lead pastor, and then Billy Joe was the lead music director. And they yeah. were they did that together for thirty three years. Dude, they, I mean, were just, they were boys. Oh, they were boys. They were boys, man. man. They, and, Still and, are. Yeah. And yeah, when we shared you know tons of meals with them and all that. But anyway, we were. Billy Joe was just into the choir thing, the Southern uh, hymnal choir and yeah. Southern gospel choir. So we would we'd go around in, in the summers as high schoolers and middle schoolers singing to nursing homes and, sure. and doing these camps oh, yeah. and stuff and I'm singing in churches. Oh yeah. So anyway, I was I was I just I, Reed I was good. It. I was better than everybody. He else. was the guy. He <laughs> was, was the, the guy. singer I in got, the church, yeah, and yeah. it was a pretty big church. I mean, we probably run. Six, seven hundred Sunday mornings, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, five hundred. I don't know. Anyway, he was the singer, so the, it, Billy Joe loved to get him up to sing specials, and yeah. he'd be like, "Hey Dan, I'm like, yeah, specials." He'd be like, "Hey, I tap Reed, get him to." Hey Reed. <laughs> so anyway, it was. So there was this song. Uh, I can't remember the song, but uh, but that Jaron Davis and New River. I think it was New River. Okay, right. Jaron Davis and New River sang. That I that he kind of like got off a tape and I would sing it mm -hmm. when we'd go and play these places. 
So we were the youth section all sat. We all sat in the same little the front right. And Karen Peck and or not Karen Peck, uh, <laughs> Dave, uh, Jared, Jared and Davis and New River were. They came to a Hopewell and did like a Wednesday night thing. And everybody came listen to them sing. And they had the band set up. And our choir sang with them. So the I mean the adult choir, not the youth choir. But I was sitting over there in the youth and son, I was just I was singing every I knew every word of these songs and it got to the song part of the show where they were about to play the song that I sing. And he called me up there. Billy Joe had talked to Jaron and Jaron was like, he was like, Man, I he was like, I know that the pastor son reads here and uh and I heard Billy Joe told me that he sings a song as a special sometimes. He's like, Why don't you just come up here? And dude, before these big things, we always had this huge dinner. So I don't even know what we ate, but it was probably barbecue <laughs> fish. and fish and yeah, yeah and, and it was green beans and mashed potatoes yeah. and all that stuff. Every casserole. So I, cool, I, I, I yeah. hounded that stuff. So my, my stomach been kind of messing with me, you know, a little bit all night. So dude, literally, he's like, Why don't, Reed, why don't you come up here? And I was like, I was like, Oh, he called me, so I, I'm going up there, and about I'm stepping out of the aisle, and you got. How walk old up. are you? Like twelve? <laughs> like twelve? I got glasses, <laughs> like, like glasses oh, on, oh. and I'm walking up there, and dude, I get I hit that first aisle <laughs> step or the, the 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 stage step, and my stomach is ripping, bro. So I, on the next three or four steps, all the way to the uh, microphone. I'm just, just kind of, I, I have just, I just got to let a little squeak pressure Squeak a little pressure. If you know off. what I mean. I'm yeah, just letting, say, I'm just dude, letting a little pressure yeah. off. Yeah, let's squeak a little <laughs> dude, pressure. Dude, I get up there and they, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you with everything in me. All right. Yeah, that's it. All right. So I get up there and they hit the music and so I start, we, they're going into it and I just start, and I know I just did and I can, I can just kind of smell it. <laughs> yeah. I start hearing people smell it. You know what I'm saying? Like you start hearing people go. Oh, and then like then you, then, oh, I, then I'm seeing everybody start like looking around like <laughs> and dude I sang I sang this song in the midst of a cloud oh, of, of of rank up there on this thing so we sang it I walk off everybody claps you know they get through the whole the next day I'm at the church it's it's like I don't know I was with dad or something and Billy Joe calls me he's like Ray he's like come up here and I go up there and he goes. Hey, I gotta ask you something, man. He's like, you did a great job. He's like, but I got, I gotta ask you something. I was like, I was like, bro, I farted all the way <laughs> from from when I got called to, for the end of that song. So, and I was, oh my it gosh, what a good story. And I don't even know if you can say farted on the podcast, but that's what. That's oh what was happening. man, yeah, there's um, there's some funny. All the beehive ladies was sitting up there going, <laughs> oh yeah, what is, what is that smell? So it was a mix of barbecue and <laughs> them beehive ladies. There's some loud altos, dude. They, they bring it too, baby. That's always the one where they, they ready go. For altar call. Their mouths open up just oh, to <laughs> the heavens. <laughs> mean. They sing it. Okay, okay, okay. We're kind of getting all over. All right, sorry, that was a fun story. <laughs> let's go back to. Let's, yeah, we're starting to get into rodeo time. Let's go. Which yeah, is let, what I want to talk. About. Yeah, I do because I don't know nothing about. Nothing. I want to talk about the rodeo. Um, when did and is is roping all you did? Did you ever like yeah, ride man. a bull or anything no, like that? No, none of that stuff. And it, and you know uh, I've. I mean, I started, of course, riding horses when I was little, and my dad roped calves when I was a kid, and then he quit whenever, kind of when we, you know, got old enough, um, I don't know, I was probably, I feel like I was probably, you know, seven, eight, nine, somewhere in there. And and Were you going to rodeos with him to watch no, him do that? No, not really. I mean, I went to a few things, but the main thing was that, you know, and it, it was odd because he never really wanted me to do it because he knew... I mean, one thing about it, it's like hunting, and you guys will know what I'm saying, is because it gets in your blood, and it's all you want to do. Uh, it's really no addictive, doubt. and it's like, I've never done any drugs, but if drugs are half as addictive as roping, and it's, You're in trouble. I'd be bad. I'd really? Be bad, yeah. bad. Yeah. And, and, and Because I feel that way about music and football, both. Yeah. About when I think about my kids. It's so true. I'm not sure that I want, I want them to get into music, you know, like, as far as being able to play. Yeah. And, but, like, I don't know that I'm going to – and football is such a vital part of my life, but I don't know that I want to like encourage sure, my it. son to play it, honestly. And he was I – th- I feel like he was the same. Well, I know he was. I mean, I wouldn't feel like it because he kind of discouraged me from it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when I kind of got through high school and kind of got uh, got out, I had a, a real good friend of mine, uh, Ronald Colley, who was a heck of a he, – he just wrote good, and he – and I started going to his place, and he had arena and all that kind of stuff. And but I, you know, I kind of kind of started roping just out in the pasture. I was doctoring calves and that kind of thing. Yeah. 
and then, you know, kind of took it into the arena kind of stuff. But, uh, man, it's, it's, you know, it's addictive. And I, I you know, before you get into it, why did he not, why did yeah, he kind of just like, what comes, I, I, we're, we're so clueless on this. Like what comes with the lifestyle? Like for me and my son is like, I don't want his back to hurt when he's 30. Was it that stupid shit he was doing when he was 12? Was he fearful? Yeah. Was he nah, fearful of injury wasn't. or was it like he doesn't, the lifestyle? I think he just wanted, he knew, I truly believe that he just didn't want me to do it uh, because he knew that that's all I'd want to do. And he, I, I mean, I feel like he wanted me to do this. I feel huh. like he wanted me to do music. Really? You know? And yeah, or, uh, you know, at least give it a chance, you know, and. Because I, I, I will tell this story. It was, uh, I remember I was, uh, you know, they have roping dummies, head, head dummies, you know, you put in a bale of hay and rope and it's practice and that kind of thing. And I was, I was standing in the, right outside the barn and, and uh, roping my head dummy. And uh, uh, I don't know how old I was. I mean, I had graduated high school, but anyway, long story short, uh, he came driving by on a, the tractor with a hay roll going to feed the cows and and uh, yeah, I remember him I can see him as plain as day sitting on that tractor and I'm standing out there just you know roping that dummy roping that dummy and he he drove by turned the tractor off where where I would you know wouldn't uh, there was no way I'd miss what he'd have to say drove up turned the tractor completely off looked over at me and he said son don't let that get in the way of your music hmm. started the tractor up and drove off wow like how old were you then? I I'm gonna say eighteen, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh I had to be right in there, eighteen, nineteen, somewhere in there. But which one at that point did you love more? Or did you even That's know? That's tough. Did you even know? Uh, you know, uh I've always loved music since I was a kid and it's all I ever wanted to do. Uh, but that was something that I always wanted to do too. I had a I don't know, it's 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 interesting to me growing up. There were two things I truly loved. I loved cowboys and I loved uh music country music and cow i mean they were my two things they mm -hmm. were ever since i was a kid man i'd i'd watch the nfr rodeo when we could get it um you know back when i was six seven years old i'd watch it on tv when we could you know the heston telecast of the of rodeo the nfr would be on when i was a kid and mm -hmm. and uh that was i mean it, it it's just i don't know it was something it's all i cared about uh, yeah. that and music, they were my two things. Like I'd watch he all, you know, <laughs> I loved nice it. I'd watch yeah. it's the first time I ever saw Whitley was on he all. Really? I heard his music, but I was like, I don't know who this dude is, you know? And then I saw him on he all. Explain wow. he all. Cause I don't know that a, some people, I think some people know what he all. And the only reason I know what he all was, is we, my hometown. And when we were in high school, they did their own version of he all. And we'd get up there and sing songs. Oh and yeah, like man. And it was a show. It was a major network show. You know, it had Buck and Roy Clark and Buck Owens on it. were kind of the host. And it was a musical, you know, kind of country. They had skits and all that kind of stuff. But the thing that interested me the most was every week they had, one of the major entertainers on there or somebody new that was hot coming up. Right. I mean, it was kind of your introduction, you know, as national television to the world of country music mm -hmm. that you could hear on the radio, but I couldn't see any of them. I right. was like, who are these dudes? And, yeah. and these, these ladies, That's you know, a, and it was, yeah, it was an opportunity for you to, and, and you also got to see great country players, man, the band, oh, they were you good. know, and watch them all yep. play. And, and it was, Put a face to a name. Yeah, and it, as a kid growing up, it was like, I don't know how to do that, but that's what I want to do. Hmm. And, it, and it was always, I mean, they were my two things. I mean, and I, I you know, I, I, uh, I mean, I've won my share of team ropings and that kind of thing. Uh, I've lost my share of them too, you know, but, but it was something that I just, I mean, I, I loved. And, and if I wasn't writing or playing music, that's what I wanted to be doing. It's obvious that it influenced your music, your, your writing too. Um, how much would you say? Do you go back to those days when you're because because maybe I need to explain this. As as commercial writers, we all have a bit of a well that we draw from, right? Like for me, um, if I'm writing a song about you know being outside or the outdoors, I'm immediately at, at where we grew up hunting, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in West Tennessee. Um, and I literally can go there. How how often do you do you dr draw from the rodeo well when you're riding? Well, I think a lot. If that you know, if that song 
you know, dictates itself to that kind of thing. That's you know, what I mean. If, if, if it's, it's the subject matter, then yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I I feel like the language and all that kind of stuff, I'm pretty legit in that kind of world. No, there ain't of, no doubt. I mean, of you definitely getting that are. on, you know, getting that getting that to tape, but uh and and, you know, I mean it's it's what we do. That's what we're you know, that's what we're here for is to bring our our livelihood and our heartbreak and our, you know, whatever to to people listening to country radio yeah. I mean, that's what we do that's 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 what we're about and and i think that for you know i and i love writing songs like that i've been i've been successful writing songs like that i've i've uh you know really enjoyed the fact that that some of those songs with that kind of background and language and stuff have you know have been able to find their way to records and, and things it's it's pretty cool i would say that you are a part of one of the greatest cowboy songs maybe ever written in the genre Ooh. oh man well i appreciate that I'm you know i mean that, like a man. cowboy for oh, me yeah, like yeah. a cowboy for me is and i don't i don't know and and, and i'm not a cowboy uh, i can't you know I, I i was in wyoming and we went to the rodeo and i bought a cowboy hat that's about as cowboy as i, yeah, as I, get. I get it <laughs> and i've ridden a horse a couple times um but yeah man like a cowboy for me i, I mean I, I knew that song way before i knew you and that let me into that lifestyle a little bit all right Dude, on a sunny, sunny day. Dude, come on, that was tough. <laughs> Sing you a song, steal your heart away like a cowboy. Solid. I mean, like I, I, I was intrigued by that song, and and, and that kind of meant, I was like, oh dang, I kind of want to be a cowboy. You know, like, yeah. like it made uh, you feel like you want to be a cowboy, even for three minutes. And absolutely, 30 seconds. man, one hundred percent. And and yeah, I mean, knowing you now, I can see where you know. Yeah, shoot, that was that was probably you know, not tough for you to, to to pin that one out a little bit. Well, it's you know you got to think too, man. I mean that. I thank you for saying that, but a lot of that's got to do with the vocal that was on it, man. Randy sure. is just a beast. Nice pass, nice, nice, <laughs> nice pass. But we, dude, well, it is. I've man, heard you sing it before yeah, too. Let me yeah, tell you what Bryce know. does that no. makes. I mean, there's a lot of things about Bryce is one of the best writers in town. Ain't no doubt. He, but he's got a specific way. I'm just going to brag on you while I'm not looking at you. Um, <laughs> no, stare at him in the eyes. But, but he's got a way of. <laughs> Make sure I know what I'm saying. There are there are specific things that come easy to Bryce that don't come easy to other career songwriters. And so he has this flavor, his flavor of chili, his spice is a little different than <laughs> some of the other spices that get put into songs. So I personally will lean on him for those things. And and he just whether it's a, a chord structure kind of walk down thing. Or a melody, I think that's what because we're all writers, right? But we all, but the, but we have either things in our past or things in our vocals or things in our heads that kind of set us apart. And he really, God has gifted you with the ability to to do some things that are uh, hard to do and rare to find in a commercial songwriter. Oh man, thanks. Really, I mean that. Well, I appreciate. And he's a pretty it. decent dude. Well, too. I think his. I, I, th I think the. Lot, I think the re Thank resume you. shows that, man. I mean, how? how yeah, I mean, that's two hundred cuts dude. over over two hundred well, well, cuts, man. You know, and and I mean, it's like Dan said. That's man. That's that's just showing up and letting God do what He does. I mean, that that I truly. Didn't. I don't. I don't know any other way to say it because. And I do find it interesting because I'm just like you boys, and that's what I admire about you guys is the fact that you what you see in other writers is what you gravitate towards. I was always that way, man. Yeah. The reason I love Dean Dillon is because he's Dean Dillon. The right. reason I loved Harley Allen uh, was because of what Harley brought to the table and what I learned from guys like Wayne Carson mm -hmm. and Dean and Harley and – and, you know, so many great writers that I got the opportunity to be in the room with that, like, I didn't take it for granted that it's like, okay, man, I, I really get to be in here today. I don't need to F this up. Sorry. Excuse me. But <laughs> no, you, I know exactly what, you're what I'm yeah, saying yeah, is exactly like, man, I don't want saying. to, but I also <laughs> want to be. I want to be smart enough to leave here with something because these guys are guys that I want to be like. For sure. Do I ever consider myself in the same? No, and I never will. But 
I do. I loved what they did so much and admired them so much as like, man, I just want a little of that to rub off on me no in some kind of way because I want to be better. I want to figure out how to do what these guys do. Yeah, man. And I would, like I said, I'd never consider myself in the same level because I'm not, but, but I think that's what, to me, and I'll say this because I feel like some of it is um, – I don't know if it's I don't know if it's as much taken for granted, but I think a lot of it is lost in, in writers in this. Town. I know I, I do too. I, I really do. I think there's I think this what we do and are so blessed to be able to do. I think so many kind of ass it off. Totally. I don't know any other way to say it, and I don't mean that in disrespect. No, I know but I mean saying. it in reality. Is like man, I love writing songs and i love when i mean i love when i hear something you guys wrote and go sure. boy they hooked that man yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah, really yeah. hooked that right. that's that's writing 101 uh and then you know we've all done it we've all been in the room with guys that show up and just like okay i'm here what are you what, what are you gonna what am i gonna be a part of today that, that <laughs> yeah that, yeah. That, yeah i feel like there are specific uh creators in this town that uh, without exposing any secrets or or without because we we all have our things right like to try to get the song across the finish line is what yes. i is what i call it but um it's so interesting to me um when you talk about the heroes and and who you looked up to and were trying to just if you could just get in the room and soak up some ounce of yeah. what it is that they do because i felt that way about you and john wiggins with Anything goes. Oh man, dude! Yeah. When I heard that song, I was like, "I gotta, I gotta figure out who those people are and get in because I love that. That was a that was like a core linear kind of song for me. As a, I mean, hell, when that come out? Oh two, a one? No, it would have been than later than that. Probably oh eight or nine. Oh eight or nine. I feel like okay. somewhere in there. It was Randy's first single, so it was somewhere. So it was right before I came to somewhere town. Somewhere around that there. was right before I came to town. Which yeah, but when, you're but you're in that mindset of I want to go there totally. and do that. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. And and man, what a what a interesting. And I look at that song now compared to the songs we've written, and compared to the songs that you've had hits on and cuts on, and and it already has kind of rub, rubbed off. Not that I'm stealing. I'm not stealing anything. Oh no, no. But that's, it's just like I mean that stuff came for you know John. I mean and I. I, you know, I, I have to, and always do, man. Jo that was John Wiggins' idea, man. Really? And he, yeah, he laid that out to me uh, that day. And we wrote it right over here. We wrote it. He had a condo right over here uh, uh, off of, uh, uh, what is this, right? which, which the old RCA was on. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, yeah, we, it was, it's crazy. I mean, John, he threw that out and I was like, holy smokes, man, what a great idea. And it was so funny. Because I will tell this story is funny. He threw that idea to Harley first, that no title. Way. And Harley just, yeah, man, I got something better. You yeah. know, kind of <laughs> typical Harley. But anyway, thank God. And, thank and, God. Yeah. And, and anyway, it, 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 John, you know, John brought that idea. And, and John's such a man, what a, what a songwriter, man. Yeah. What a singer, songwriter, human being. I yeah. mean, one of my, he was like a big brother to me in this town. And I, I love that guy so much and got to give so much, um, you know, a nod to him mm -hmm. and, and his brilliance. And, but, and when we wrote that song, um, you know, to be honest with you, uh, I mean, I felt like we, we, we kind of knew we'd done something cool, but we weren't ever sure anybody would ever cut it. Sure. Cause you know, I mean, every, everybody like, normal up tempo positive all. Oh, and yeah, then the, yeah, yeah. i feel like this i don't know if it had started but i feel like the the tailgate truck thing had kind of started at that point too and it was like everybody but god bless randy hauser again man i mean he h told me that when he heard first heard the first verse and course of that song he knew he was cutting it really because sarah canaby actually yeah. pitched that song to him she was working at bug i think back then and they had bought the windswept catalog uh -huh. And that that song was in there. So how old was the song? Um, when did you cut? I don't remember it being that old. Probably a year and a half, maybe two years, something like that. Maybe a year and a half, maybe. I mean, today's standard. That's kind of an old song, as far as like you yeah, pitch. Yeah, yeah, 
And it, it was, it may be a year somewhere in there. I mean, I know it was, um, cause it was on hold for McGraw whenever Randy cut it. Mm. Um, and I, you know, I, can't uh, say, I, can't hear McGraw I couldn't that. either. That was a thing. <laughs> I couldn't either. And, and, but you know, uh, Missy, you know, she loved that song. She flipped over that song and God, she's tough, man. She's, she's hard to get a song by. And, yeah. but she loved that song, man. And she, she really wanted it for him, but it, it landed in the right spot, man. Yeah. I mean, it was just a, you know, once again, once again, one of the greatest vocal performances and, and it's, you know, uh, I mean, how's was He's a killer. He's my favorite. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll just be honest with you. That guy, and I've spent so much time with him and been on the road writing with him and, and just, just being around him as a person. But just, man, he opens his – I mean, he he makes you be a better writer. Hmm. When he he picks up a guitar and opens his mouth, it's really? like – inspirational yeah it's so yeah. inspirational and yeah. it's and he's such a good human being too that's the thing is like you know um i don't know i i you know i've been around and been lucky to be around a lot of great artists and have a lot of cut but man he is he's hands down one of my favorites mm -hmm. i mean i just every time Every time he says, hey, man, I cut this, I'm just like, I cannot wait to hear this. Vocal. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear this record, you know? I mean, I just cannot wait to hear him sing yeah, this song. Yeah, 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 for sure. You got something, I got something. Go, I, go for it, go for it. Do you, so this happens to us a lot. Oh, I shouldn't say that. This happens to us sometimes uh, when we get somebody in the room and they immediately want to start talking about hunting, like as fast as they possibly because. Sure. At this town, at this point, the town knows that's kind of oh, yeah. all we do, you yeah. know. So, how easy for it? How easy is it for you to sniff out someone who hasn't rodeoed that wants to talk about it? Oh man, it takes about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Probably talk about me. I mean, it, uh, yeah, it's and it's interesting. It's it's odd to me because do you I, ever just like roll your eyes or do I you go with it? I don't. I just let it kind of be what it is because you know. I mean, it's, you know, I will say this, which I thought was funny. Um, I I have uh, been producing the new Chancey Williams record, and Chancey's an uh, artist out west, you mm -hmm. know, while cool. I'm in full-on rancher. I mean, this this guy is cowboy through and through. And I the thing that drew me the most to him was he didn't put on that. Hmm. It's like, I mean, this guy's legit. His family's ranched all their life. He made the college finals a couple times, high school finals, and then he got into music. And so he didn't, you know, really, he, I think he kind of had to make a choice. It's like, am I going to chase this rodeo thing? And he was legit in what he was doing, or am I going to chase music? Well, hmm. he chose music, and he's, but the thing I admire about him and why I started wanting to, to work with him was because he didn't, he didn't, uh, I, here's, I'll say it like this, and you guys will know what I'm saying. Anybody who's, I don't care if you're a great songwriter, a great musician, a great hunter, a great cowboy, they don't talk about it. <laughs> they don't talk about it. Yeah. They let their work say all that needs to be said for yeah. them. Yeah. And he's one of those guys, gotcha. and I admired it immediately because – we hit it off, and we kind of knew. We got asked to write um, Jamie Calhoun, a gal here in town who does uh, some of my publishing stuff. Anyway, um, she said, you need to write with Chancey. He needs to know you and blah, blah, blah. So she kind of got us on the phone, and we talked. And we probably talked for an hour the first time we ever talked. And we we talked about music, but then we kind of talked about, you know, rodeo, ranch, and that kind of stuff. And, and anyway, long story short, um, it's just what I admire in people who are great at what they do. Mm. They don't, they don't lead with, oh man, I've done this, this or whatever. You know, they just let that be an underlying part of the conversation or whatever they do. They pick up a guitar and you're like, you know, you know. I mean, you yeah. know, immediately yep. they pick up a guitar yeah, and the know. first time they put their hands on it, and start playing. You're like, Ooh, or you're like, Ooh, mm, you know, yeah. and it's the same way in that world. It's just like hunting with you guys, you know, or, or, or anybody that does something really well. I mean, the greatest cowboys I've ever known, uh, and I've known a lot of great ones. I've known a lot of great ranching, just straight up ranching guys who've never rodeoed that have just, I mean, they, you know, they know that their business. And then I've known some of the best, 
you know, rodeo athletes, cowboys that there are. And, and I find in all of them the same common thread, just like I do in the music business mm -hmm. with great writers or musicians, stuff like that is they don't have to talk about it. They just yeah. do it. They just do it. Yeah. yeah. And they, they are. They're yeah. not, they're not out there preaching about, Hey, look at me. I've done this. Or, Hey, look at me. I've done this. Or, Hey, I do this or whatever. They, they just do it. That's just not who they are. And they just let do it. Yes. You know they do, Ledoux. man. They just, just Chris let do it. It's part of the, you know, it's part of their <laughs> fabric. It's just like them putting on their boots or whatever, yeah. man. It's just, it's, it's who they are. And, and I find a lot of times the more people talk about stuff, <laughs> It's probably because they're way insecure Preach, about the fact that they're not really Preach. know what they're doing. Yeah. And yet they, and, and you know, over and over, I mean, we see it in our business. I see it in that world. You guys probably see it in the hunting world and stuff like that. It's, um, I just, I don't know. And, and I, I think you can, for me, I've always thought, man, I can learn a lot more by just being quiet and sure. paying attention. No doubt. My favorite is, uh, you guys got any bow kills yet? <laughs> You're like, <laughs> This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. No, well, you guys actually, caught any deer? Yet? I actually shot one. Yeah. Really kind of funny. Um, it's kind of like people going, "Hey, man, have you sold any songs?" Oh, I was yeah, about to say that. The, yeah. So, yeah. what's the ranching one? What's the what's the first thing that rode any horses lately? Like, how is it? Uh, roped oh. any bulls? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wrangle, oh, wrangled yeah. any, any yeah. bulls? Wranglered any yeah. bulls out yeah. there in the wide open? Uh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, That's so good. <laughs> you have a good story about nothing on with the radio, mm. right? Can you yeah. tell that? I can. Oh, I, I don't can. know this. I don't know this at all. How'd you know? Oh, the sheet. The sheet, dude. I, uh, dude, I be prepared for I these things next the time, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, uh, I mean, the story is, it's it's just, it's it's very typical to Nashville a lot of times, I feel like. In, Who'd you write in, that with? Uh, Odie Blackman and Byron okay. Hill. And uh, the, the thing about that song is we, uh, Odie and Byron were producing uh, some stuff on me trying to help me get a record deal. And Odie and I go all the way back to college uh, when we first met. And then Byron was kind of one of our mentors, really. I mean, um, I mean, Hall of Fame, the guy's tremendous songwriter and, and an even better human being as well. Byron is just, God, he's salt to the earth and so freaking talented. And, and Odie and I learned so much from Byron. Um, but we wrote that song on kind of a project thing we were doing, trying to get me a record deal. And we pitched it around. We had meetings and that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, I didn't get a deal and, and, but that song went on hold for several artists. I mean, you know, uh, it took, I think it was five and a half years before it came out. I mean, it what? Was, yeah, it was that five, song. Yeah, it was. It was around a long time. That's man. a hit. I mean, and, you know, that's a hit. The second yeah, that's, that's starts playing. Hit. Well, we had thought that, you know, like you guys. I mean, written songs, and I mean, when we walked out of there that day, we were all like, "Oh yeah, this we is just one, did this, is, yeah. this is one of them." And yeah. and uh, um, you know, it hung around, and and it was actually on hold for Gary the record before, and he didn't cut it. Uh, and I got a record deal huh. at RCA in, in between that time. And So you're like, I'm cutting this. Well, the odd thing was, you know, I had been writing a bunch and, and you know, they had been looking for songs for me. And we were going in first five or six sides to cut. And and uh, I had a meeting uh, set up and we were going in to sit down. It was me and Renee Bell who signed mm -hmm. me over there. She was she was my A&R person. And, and uh it's funny. We went into that meeting and Renee was like, Hey Bryce, I was like what? She's come in here her office for, we went in that meeting and she's like, Hey, I want to show you my list. And she had like five or six songs on a list and nothing on but radio was her first song on that list. She Is that for you? Cut. That list mm -hmm. for you. Okay. Yeah. And I thought, Oh man, that's cool. You know, cause you, you know, um, I mean, at, the, at this time, I hadn't had a hit. I mean, yeah. I had a song. I actually had a Harley and I had a single on John Michael Montgomery called cool. Mm -hmm. That was on the greatest hits record. That, that well, that's a whole nother story. That, oh, <laughs> yeah, God, that's a heartbreaker. No, there, the... but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we go into that meeting and we're playing songs, and they picked a couple or whatever, and and they got around to that song, and and uh, the head of the label man, he was writing the checks and making the decisions. He was like, "Nah, what else we got?" I mean, no we played way. like the first verse and chorus, and he was like, "Okay, what else we got? What else, you know? Is there oh something? I mean, just went gosh. by it that fast." And I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, we're not going to do that." And 
And in all honesty, once again, and I and I, I you know, I I say this often. God has a plan, Dude, man. Everything and happens for a reason, man. No we doubt. left that meeting and about I don't know, I feel like maybe within six weeks, yeah. Gary cut it. Um, I had actually asked the girl that was working for the publishing company uh, to take it and play it. Um, and uh, she took it over and played it for Shane Barrett, who played it for Clay Bradley, who played it for Mark Wright, who, you know, eventually cut it on Gary. Jeez, and, uh, went through that many hoops. Yeah, man, and it, and it was it was one of those things. It's like we cut other stuff. I cut eighteen sides at, at RCA, and they couldn't find a first single. You know, it was like, oh man, let's go in one more time. And finally, God bless Renee Bell. She stood up in a meeting and finally said, "Look, if you guys don't get him, let's let him go. Let's let him go somewhere else and yeah. do his thing. Mm -hmm. You're not getting him. We're not cutting right. three or four more songs. It's not gonna. You know, I was there probably two, three years, maybe. In that time, from the time I got signed till the Till they let me go in January of 04. Carrie and I got married the week before they dropped me at the label, <laughs> which, is, yeah. which is crazy. Because we got married. They dropped me the next week. Wait a second. At Tell RCA. me. So they, you got married and then they dropped you? Yeah. Carrie and I got married. Uh, we, we eloped in Franklin, Kentucky at the courthouse, got married, went to nice. Memphis for the weekend, came back to work Monday. No big deal. Told her we got married. Hey, man, don't <laughs> leave out that you didn't let her know either. When you got married, that you had just lost your, or you were. Well, they had, no, we were together when I let her know. Yeah. When they told me like the next week, it's like, we just got married and, and I, all right. So we got married, uh, the 23rd. Come on now. Of Come January. On. Okay. 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 No, no, no. I'm good with this. Cause <laughs> she's the one that messed That was, that was a just a, a few well, seconds of um, What I was trying there. to get to okay. was when they had called me, let me know that I was so 23rd, then the next week. They right at the end of January, they uh, my manager who was Scott Simon at the time, who I truly love and respect, uh, he called me and goes, "Well, they're not going, you know, they're they're moving on." I was like, "All right, cool." I lose my publishing deal the next month too, so oh, I'm without my freshly married gosh. without a pub deal and a record deal within a like a month and a half of getting oh, married, brutal, and I'm sure I'm 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 thinking by the time I'm you know laying there in their bed at night, I'm thinking, boy, I bet she's glad she said yes. I mean, hell, why wouldn't she? This be, is the know? best time of our lives. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. What am I going to do the rest of my life? You know, I'm just you know, and. God bless her because she worked in the business. She got it, and she, and she, I mean, as far as I know, she never thought anything about it. But fast forward, and, and and I will. Why I love Scott Simon so much is I lost. He was managing me. I lost my record deal, my pub deal, and I went in, you know, having a meeting with him and and just saying, you know, what what I'm going to do. And he goes, man, don't worry about it. I'm going to get you another record deal. I'll get you another pub deal. And he said, and on your way out stopped by Chris, who was his his right-hand girl out front. He goes and tell her what you need this month to get by him. And he wrote me a check his, out of his that. own pocket yeah, to pay, cool. and paid me for like three months out of his own pocket till Sheesh. he got me another pub deal and got me a, a, a – and he did. He ended up getting me – like I got another pub deal in like May of that year, a record deal like first of June of that year and nothing on but the radio came out May of that year and was number one two weeks in December of that same year. Come so on, you start in January story. with all Jeez. that stuff. Yeah, that's a beautiful cool. story. And the you get to December and you've you know, you got another pub deal, record deal, and a number one, two week number one at the end Come of that year. God's man. good, ain't he? He's amazing. That's cool, man. Yeah, man. It that's is amazing, story. man. I mean, I watched it firsthand, but I find it interesting and I in, in my journey of this town but also in my spiritual walk as well what i find so interesting in that is i wonder if i truly wonder if he'd have given me that and if i if if i hadn't married if i hadn't been married i just hmm. you know what i mean i feel yeah. like it's a blessing of like okay you're you know you've been praying for this girl you got her you 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 know you You've done what you need to do. Now let's move on to the blessings that come thereafter in life or coming your way based on the fact of like, okay, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're getting it together. Yeah, man. for sure, you know? man. Yeah, that's no, cool. I, I and I know that, you know, in all honesty, um, you know, we, uh, 
we started a foundation the next year after that and and uh in my hometown and it, it uh, you're doing some amazing work with yeah, that. Yeah, will you will you will you give us a, just a short yeah, a short us, snippet oh, of yeah, what man, you got absolutely. going on? Well, it's you know we, Karen, I the first um, I was I, I don't even you know people ask me all the times like why what made you want to do that or whatever and I I mean I'll be honest with you I was headed to a right one day, and this was right after nothing on but the radio and you know it, how long it takes before we get paid yeah. and so anyway we get paid the following year and blah 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 and I get, get got a you know decent check and it's like first time i'd seen any money and you know gosh i moved here in 93 so that's 11 years you know yeah, first yeah. time i'd seen any any money yeah. barely getting by for yeah. all those years you know doing what you got to do to stick around town and and uh man i was leaving to go to right that morning and it was just like i don't know I, I i just had this thought of like man you know what would be so cool is to is to find some families that can't have Christmas and buy them Christmas, like yeah. figure out how to do that. And that was right. It was like in November of that year, I feel like of 05. And, and, uh, I, so, uh, with some friends of mine in my hometown, I mean, we, we figured it out and, and Carrie and I paid for five families to have Christmas, you know, that could not have, they weren't going to be able to afford it. Uh, had kids and all that kind of thing. We found them through the school system and, you know, in need and kind of thing. And we, so we bought it. And, and out of that, the next year we did our first benefit show that kind of started this nonprofit thing and, and man, and, and, you know, we're, we're coming up on 20 years and Gosh, great, last man. year, you know, we helped like 127 families Jeez. have Christmas. Dude, and, you've raised over a million dollars for yeah, these families. Yeah, this year we, we went it's over awesome, a million dollars and, you know, and, and, and it's all in our, it stays all the money and what we've raised stays in our community, in my hometown area, man, of Christian Todd and Tree County, which is Western mm -hmm. Kentucky there. And, and man, I've had so many people, you know, um, I don't know. I've just had so many people, you know, so many great writers, um, so many artists um, come and play, yeah. give of themselves, give of their time, uh, come up and play and help me do this thing every year. And then so many people in our community just give. And the first is funny because the, the first few years, you know, the second year, I think we did like 10 families and then we just kind of gra gradually grew. But it grew because so many people were starting to understand and they were starting to get it and they were, you know, yeah. people sponsoring and, and, uh, man, I've had so many friends of mine from, you know, Canada to all over this, you know, our, our great country that people I meet and stuff go, Hey man, what, what about this charity thing you That's do cool, in your man. hometown? And then, you know, come, come time. I mean, they'll, they, they donate and That's they great. don't even have any connection outside of like knowing me to it. But they're like, man, I want to be a part of that thing. I want to, you know, give to it. And I'm like, man, that's, that's awesome. But man, none of us have ever took a nickel from it. Every dollar we've ever raised goes right back into that community of those, those counties. And, and it's and, called, it's called the back to back mm, foundation. Back to back yeah, how, does, it, org. how does a, how does a listener? Uh, yeah, it's back to, to back, that. back to back, the number two back foundation.org. And they can pull it up. There's a donate page on there and all that kind of stuff, but they can see what we do. And, and, uh, yeah, man. And, and, and out of, um, you know, what we've been able to do and raise, man, we've been able to help so many other organizations in yeah. our community. The, the back, we backpack program every year for the school systems and, and all that they all, you know, we, we, we are able to help fund that boys and girls club. I mean, you name it, you go down through there and we've sanctuary house, which is for battered and abused women. And I mean, it's, it's just, I don't know, man. I mean, like I said, I, you know, I heard, I heard Vince say this one time, uh, Vince Gill say this one time in an interview with uh, um, about one of the charitable families in Nashville. Um, uh, they said, uh, you know, if you if the fir if, if you're asking for somebody to do something, if the first dollar comes out of your pocket, people know you're legit Ooh, yeah. and know you're serious about it. Yeah. And I thought, wow, man, that's cool. Because yeah. and, and in that, I, I believe that if you take that first step. God will take the rest Agreed. of it. Then, then it's like you see things happen and you're like, oh, my gosh, where'd that come from? Or, I mean, we've had 
It's unexplainable. It, it yeah. is. It is truly unexplainable, yeah. Reed, because it's. I mean, we've had it's so odd. Somebody will call and go, "Hey, man, my kid." You know, I bought my kid a guitar and like he outgrew it and he didn't really care. Can we like, get, is there any, any of, you know, any of the families y'all are helping this year? Any of those kids want a guitar? We're like, oh, man, I, yeah, you know, I don't know. And I'm not kidding you, man. Sorry. The very next day <laughs> you get like, cause, cause we asked the families, you know, what, what, yeah, yeah. you know, what do you kids, number one, we're there to, to, to facilitate with the needs. Yeah. What are your, you know, what are your needs? What are you, and then, you know, we want to get the kids something that they love to do. Sure, and I'm not kidding. The very next day, one of the kids was like a nine year old kid and he wanted to learn to play the guitar. Unreal. I mean, like the very next day. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And you go, you know, yeah. you just throw your hands up and go, okay, I'm, I'm paying yeah. attention. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, I think part of that is just being receptive to what you feel called to do and, and good on you for, for hearing that, you know, in your, in your soul and, and obviously, it's what you're supposed to do because you're helping people every Christmas, man. So. Yeah, man, it's 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 what we, I mean, for, for Carrie and I and for everybody that helps with it, you know, it's kind of what we look forward to. Carrie and I, don't we don't give each other Christmas presents. We hadn't for a long time. That's been kind of our thing. Is Did you talk to my wife about that? About that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about having to get each other Christmas presents, man. That would be, that'd be cool if That's you could do so that. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice, wouldn't it? What'd you get for Jordan? You got something lined up? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! He's he really doesn't, but he wanted to say, "Oh yeah!" No, I definitely did. Something for you right here. I'm sure that was important. <laughs> that thing you had to say, but it's time in the show for the one that got away. Son, what about that fake fact? Like that. Woo! You just pick it up. You think he was a guitar player? Or something. Rhyme. You would think he can do something besides hunt, really. Hey, yeah. you, you would think. Play. You would think. <laughs> And eat beef jerky sticks <laughs> during our ride. All right, Bryce, we're going to hit you with the one that got away. Um, could be a song, could be a deer, could be a fish. Could, could be, be a, a rodeo girl, championship. Could, could be, be a rodeo. What do you mean a, ro a rodeo championship? I'm saying like, yeah, you're you're riding you on the horse. Championship? You <laughs> some rodeo championship? You're like seven in seconds you got thrown off because you looked at a pretty girl in the stands uh, or something. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Well, like, that's what, yeah. Is there eight seconds? Thank it thank could be the two that got away, the girl and the championship. Yeah, no, it's uh. Where you gonna take us? Where you gonna take us to, man? What got away, dude? It's interesting. Um, could be a song that someone told you you had cut and came in, sang harmonies on. How many and times has that finish. happened to us, pal? Yeah, I've, I've been a part of that more than once. Um, and that's uh, there's a I mean, you know, I could go, I could either go music or, you know, yeah, we got time doing both kind Let's of do thing. It. Well. Now real I do quick want to, on a real quick. I mean, <laughs> it, it's 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 kind of a tough. Um, uh, my very first single I was telling you was a song called "Cool" that that Harley and I wrote that John Michael cut. And uh, oh man, John Michael and I have seen John Michael and he has apologized. But anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> uh, it's because uh, I you know it was so cool. It's like you know that man you're just you just can't even believe it's happening yeah. you know you get that cut and then they're like oh it's gonna be the single off the greatest hits yeah, package man. and it's like and harley and i went over they we went over and got to hear it oh know, yeah they the play they they're they're doing that, that yeah. it's like so you're high five and walking across there you know and harley had you know so successful at this yeah. time anyway he'd had the baby on him and um you know uh just the little girl you know i mean uh, um well, the baby was Blake, I guess, wasn't it? I don't, I don't, I don't even remember, remember that song. I don't know. Anyway, long story short, that doesn't matter. But anyway, we had, and it, you know, it came in with great reviews and charted, and it was big, and then all for a little bit of too much alcohol uh, no way. at a show. Yeah, it just kind of, anyway, and they, I think it was a clear channel show. Or so. Anyway, long story short, uh, uh, it they pulled it. The you know, oh, yeah, it was, and you was talk it at about, radio yet? Yeah, oh yeah. Where yeah, was it at? It came in, it was like in the thirties, I think. And it was big. <laughs> it was a, man, they were all the ray you know, everybody was like, Oh my gosh, this is great, you know, it's so good and blah 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 and it's and like Eddie, uh, 
you know, we were on we were on Columbia together, okay. like uh, Eddie and Troy, and then me, and then and I just love you know, and I you know I'm I love their I love those guys. I mean, I truly do, and and love their music and what you know John Michael did was amazing. What Eddie and Troy did so was amazing. Just, and, just so people don't, people don't understand, what we're talking about John Michael Montgomery mm -hmm. and Eddie Montgomery right. of Montgomery Gentry yeah. were brothers. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so. We were on. I was on the same label with with Eddie and Troy and Montgomery Gentry, and and uh, so we were doing a um, Kentucky Music Hall of Fame. They were inducting the Judds and John Connolly and I think uh, Dottie Rambo and Sam Bush. That was the four that year because mm. they asked me to play. Mm. And uh, uh, I had a single out called Anywhere But Here at the time, and and uh, um, that also did nothing uh but <laughs> let's just make that it's also another one that got yeah, away yeah, yeah but anyway long story short uh we were up there and and uh, i was talking to eddie and stuff and john michael was there and and eddie goes uh hey john come here and and uh, <laughs> he goes he goes man do you know bryce long and john michael just looked at me and went man I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, he goes, oh, you an apology, man. Was that, like, the, was that the descent of of like the the big popular John Michael? Was it was it from that well, radio it was, thing? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it was, it was, it was to me as a, a listener. It was like he was bam, life's a dance, oh, and, man, then, he was and then just gone. Well, like, I mean, almost. you got to think there were so many. There was a couple comebacks. There. Oh, there was man. a couple yeah, comebacks. And, and that single, and then it kind of was a downer for a minute, and then they came back with Letters from Home. That was yeah, so song. good, Tony Wayne. And God bless John Michael, he put Cool on that record too. Oh, sweet. So I mean. that was that was kind of a cool thing that it, that they also put it on that record. But yeah, it's such a great David and Tony Lane, man. David Lee, Tony Lane, what a great song, man. Letters from Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then cool. the other thing was, I, I remember this was, gosh, probably ninety. Five maybe ninety six somewhere in there, ninety five ish I guess. Anyway, I'd gone to a uh, jackpot team roping down, and I think it was where was it? Yeah, maybe somewhere in Georgia. I feel like anyway, and we were we were in the roping, and they uh, I think I was third high call with a guy, and we there was an incentive in that roping too, is like. What uh, is third high call? You should send me I'm a day sorry, just man. To, like, we just said third high call. So anyway, cool. Short go, you know, short they, they really take cool. the top 20 back, whatever, and you're, you know, first high call. It's like time, you know, you're fastest on three, you got the fourth head to run, and that was, that's sure. the thing. That okay, they, I'm just going to trust you. <laughs> yeah. Well, fastest anyway, on three, fourth go, head to run. Yeah, it's short I know exactly go, what that means. Third high call. Got it. Yeah. Anyway, and we come back and, and one of my one of my best buddies I've roped with forever, Scott Lund, and I are sitting there, you know, waiting on our run because I think they were second high call and then the first high call, and we were third. But but there was an incentive in this roping as well, and we were an incentive team because we were uh, our our numbers, and it's kind of like uh, having a handicap in golf or okay. something. So we were kind of uh, my team were we were third high call for the whole roping, and we were like first high call in the incentive. And so Scott and I were sitting there talking, waiting on a run. You know, we're watching all these runs and stuff. And, <laughs> and man, so they're giving away these saddles at the end of the deal, you know, and they're nice, man. They're really nice saddles. And I'm like, God, I want, I want that saddle. And I'm thinking, we don't only have a chance to win the incentive saddle. We got a chance to win the roping, too. So yeah. we, we got a chance at two saddles. Yeah. And I'm thinking, we're 16 seconds ahead of the next incentive team to rope our short ghost. All we got to do is catch. Yeah. I don't care if we, you know, run him to the end of the arena, run him around the arena just a couple catch times, him. catch a leg, yeah. not too fit, whatever. If we just stop the clock, we're winning the incentive saddle. Yeah. Hands down. Right. And then we got a chance to win the actual if we do whole good, roping too. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> I'm fixing to walk in the box and they got the music blaring, you know, and the announcer's going, all right, blah, 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 making a big deal, you know, trying to stir everybody up. Yeah. And I'm fixing to walk in and my good buddy who I love to death, he leans over me and goes, hey, man, you know, he's going to miss. And I was like, what? My header, you know, I'm healing. Uh -oh. He goes, you know, he's going to miss. And I was like, what? He goes, dude, he's not good in a short go. He's like, dude, he, he, he chokes. And I was like, Come on, dude, man. why did you have to say that now? 
Why? As you're as you're about yes, to like get on I'm the horse. To, as I'm fixing to ride into the box, back in the box, he's gonna nod for the steer and we're gonna run him. And I'm going, why did you have to say that? Meanwhile, I'm walking in and he goes, No, man, I just nothing, you know, he's I'm just telling you, you know, he's known for choking. And I was like, God, why do you <laughs> No joke. We're at the front of the box. Both are walking in. They're, you know, they're cutting. They're saying, you know, these boys, they don't have to be. They're 16 seconds ahead of the next incentive team. They don't have to do blah, blah, blah. blah. All they got to do is stop the clock. I mean, they're going on and on in my header. He goes, just keep him straight down the pin. I'm like, okay, got you on that, which means don't let him, you know, get to the fence on this side or just Mm. kind of keep him, you know, kind of get out, haze him. And I'm like, dude, I got you, buddy. I'm like, just turn him. I'm, you know, and given. I don't care who you are. There's a chance when that chute gate opens, both of us can miss. Yeah. But I'm feeling pretty confident about, I mean, we were good. I'd rope good that day, you know, and, and he had two. He'd rope lights out. And anyway, he backs in the box and I, you know, he nods, the steer leaves. I leave beside him. His sucker, it was like he was on a string right down the middle of the pen. This sucker had his head up, sticking up, man. He was just running, just kind of. Good is that, dream, is that dream scenario? Oh, that? it's it's all you'd ever okay. want. Automatic. Yeah. I mean, we Automatic. drew a good one. He's about medium down the pin, man. He's just going down through there, and I'm riding beside him, man. Got swinging my rope, and I watch this guy roll right up in the middle of him, swing over his back a couple of times, and miss his whole head. I mean, the rope just goes right across the top of his head, <laughs> and I just went, ugh. <laughs> so, what does that mean for you? It means we're 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 out, man. It means oh, we're toast. Yeah, we're I mean, I lost both saddles that quick, man. We didn't have them stopped. So the the team who was who knows what, 16 seconds, had had at least caught before us. So they, you know, we didn't win. (laughs) I mean, nothing. (laughs) We didn't win anything in that roping. And my buddy right behind me, he's the next run, you know, and I'm down at the other end, you know, calling my rope or whatever, you know, head hanging, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and they make a decent run. I think they ended up winning second in the roping or whatever. And and uh, I just look up at him and I, because I'm waiting on him. We're we're really great friends. And I, I was I was like, man, good run. He goes, yeah. He goes, oh man, thanks. I told you he was gonna miss. <laughs> I mean, the first thing come out of his mouth, he said, I told you he was gonna miss. And then we just rode off, and I was like, golly, man, oh my gosh. But yeah, so couple things that got away. Saddles got away yeah. and singles. Saddles and singles, Single, man. Saddles and singles got Get away. away. Bryce, <laughs> uh, hit song long, man. We've uh, we've enjoyed you having, having know, you on, It's been an man. hour. I can't believe it. It's been an hour and 20. Well, oh, yeah. we've been We've been rocking, that bro. Awesome. That was fun. Um, y'all be sure and check out Back to Back Foundation. Bryce is doing, they're doing some great stuff. Him and his wife, Carrie. Um, and yeah, dude, you're one of the best dudes in town. We oh, love you. Thanks, yeah, we appreciate well, I you. I love you boys too, man. Yeah, we I'm appreciate you out. taking Back at you 100%. taking shots on us. You know, just as as uh, peons, we appreciate you riding with us. And oh man, well, being, being buddies more than anything. Thank y'all, man. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate you having me. Oh yeah. Thanks for hanging out in God's country. See you next time. <laughs>